Hi everyone, uh, my name is Doris Lee and I'm a product manager for Snowflake Notebooks. Uh, Snowflake Notebooks is an interactive development environment where you can build your data science, AI, machine learning, and data engineering workflows. With Snowflake Notebooks, you can seamlessly explore, analyze, and visualize your data using Python and SQL. In today's video, we'll walk you through how you can get started with your first notebook project using Snowflake Notebooks. Now let's dive in. So here I have my Snowflake Notebooks open. This is my first Snowflake Notebooks object. And you can see here that Snowflake Notebooks is a fully managed service running in Snowflake. And you can see that here I am logged into the Snowflake interface, no site. You can see all the projects, worksheets, notebooks, streamlit, dashboards uh, that I can open up here. We're in the notebooks pane right now. And first I need to add packages that the packages that I'm going to be using with my Snowflake Notebooks, you can see that Snowflake Notebooks comes prepackaged with a set of default libraries used for data science and machine learning. And in this tutorial specifically, we are going to add in Matplotlib and then also SciPy, which we're going to use later in this tutorial. So you can see that I've added those packages in. And then, so now we're ready to get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to run this cell. Uh, and you can see that this cell has a bunch of imports. When I first start to run this cell, this notebook starts the session. And so this takes a few seconds for this to load up. With Snowflake Notebooks, you don't need to worry about configuring or setting up your notebook session or managing packages or installations to get started. So we can see that now we have our notebooks session active. Uh, and I ran that first cell to import all of these Python packages that I'll be using. The really awesome thing about Snowflake Notebooks is it allows you to write both in Python and SQL. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're first going to generate some synthetic data set. And this is all done in SQL. And you can see that I've generated a synthetic data set of Snowboard product along with their rating and price. And I have this really nice data frame. I can sort based on price and I can sort based on rating. So this is a really great way of visualizing my data. Now, I have this really awesome sort of set of data and I want to go back to working in Python. One of the really nice things about Snowflake Notebooks is that you can actually reference the SQL cell outputs in Python. So we're going to go back here and take a look at the SQL cell. The SQL cell was named cell5. And I can use this cell name cell5 to reference the Python variable with this data frame. Um, so you can see here I have cell5. And then I want to convert this into a pandas data frame. So if I run this query, you can see that this df variable now contains this pandas data frame with, my, with the same data from my SQL results. Now that I have my data in Python, I can now visualize my data with Altair. Um, so Altair is a popular visualization library, and we can use that to generate a chart here. And you can see here that we've rendered this distribution of ratings. And you can see that this is kind of like a bell curve. And so let's say that, you know, I want to go beyond Altair. I want to plot fancier visualizations and really like look at my distribution, compute median, and things like that. For that, I can use Matplotlib. Matplotlib is another very popular Python library for visualization. And here in particular, we're going to use the df.plot command with pandas. And so if I run this, you can see that I have this really awesome chart, which plots the kernel density estimation over my histogram. And then I also, I'm computing the median value and plotting it here. So again, this is the code to do all of that plotting with matplotlib. So in this next section, we're going to look at how you can use Snowpark in Snowflake Notebook. Snowpark Python is a set of APIs that let lets you query and process your data scalably and securely directly in Snowflake. If you're interested in learning more about Snowpark Python, make sure to check out 
these other videos on the Snowflake channel. One of the things I love about using Snowpark in a notebook environment is that I have this ability to run these two commands to get the session information with Snowpark. That allows me to get the session variable configured without actually needing to do any authentication steps. So I don't need to specify my username and password, which you typically have to do if you're working with Python locally or using a local notebook. All you have to do is set up these two lines of code, and then I have my sessions object and I'm ready to go with Snowpark. And so one of the things that we can do with Snowpark is use this write pandas command. I can use this write pandas command to write my data frame. Again, my data frame is, in, is a pandas data frame. I want to write it as a table. And this table is called snow underscore catalog. So if I run this, you can see that this table is now stored as a table called snow catalog. So we now have this snow catalog table. And Snowpark allows us to really easily work with tables. So I can use session.table to, again, load this as a Snowpark data frame back into my df variable. And then I'm going to run df.describe on it. Describe basically computes quantitative sort of statistics, such as median, standard deviation, min and max on, on all of my columns. So this is a very convenient way of getting an overview of the distribution and, and the statistics with my data set. OK, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, show you how you can use the Jinja syntax to read Python variables, the value of Python variables, into your SQL query. And you can see how this is a very convenient way of simplifying your subquery. So we're going to start with something basic. In this example, we have this Python variable called threshold equals to 5. I can do a simple select star query where I'm filtering based, uh, the rating based on the threshold. And you can see that we can use this double bracket notation, which is a Jinja syntax, to read in this threshold value. And similarly, this doesn't just work for numeric variables. This also works for data frames. So you can even filter a pandas data frame with SQL. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to flow easily between Python and SQL by referencing variables and output within the, the, the cells. So in this example, what I have defined is in Python, I've defined the mean equals to 5 and the standard deviation is 3. And I'm going to use that mean and standard deviation in my SQL query. So you can see that in my data generation code, I can set the mean and the standard deviation as 5 and 3 based on what is read from this Python variable. So I'm going to run this query now, which creates a table based on the synthetic generated data that we saw earlier. And so if you do a select star from the snow catalog, you can see this is the data that has been generated. In this next example, we're going to take a look at how you can compute the average rating of all products with rating above 5. The way that you would typically do this with SQL is that you would have to create a common table expression, a CTE, to essentially do a, a subquery based on all the rows in my table that has rating above 5. So this is what this you know, subquery would, would kind of look like. Uh, you first have to select a table where the rating is greater than 5. You name that as something. And then you select the average rating based on your subquery. So obviously, this is like quite a lot of code. It's seven lines. And let's take a look at how you can simplify this by using Snowflake Notebooks. So with Snowflake Notebooks, this is much easier because you can get the same results by filtering a SQL table based on the results of another SQL cell. So let's take a look at what this looks like. This is essentially two lines of code. And remember, what is our cell 21? Our cell 21 is this result that we had earlier. The cell 21 is essentially this snow catalog table. And all we have to do is say, hey, I, I want the average rating 
from this table where rating is greater than five. So you can see how this is much more readable than compared to writing regular SQL uh, with common table expressions. In this next section, we're going to take a look at how you can build a Streamlit app and run that directly in your Snowflake notebooks. So we're going to put all of this together. Um, you know, we saw an example of how we generated data using SQL. And then we also saw an example of how we plotted a visualization based on that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build a Streamlit app. And you can see Streamlit using this D slider, which is essentially a slider that controls the mean. Uh, remember the mean, we, we had an example of this that was set at three, and then standard deviation was set as five. And so here we can see the two sliders representing this value. Now in my next cell, I have this exact same SQL query. And in this SQL query, I am creating the snow catalogs table based on the distribution that was generated. And the distribution uses this mean and standard deviation value that I have in Python. So now if I put all of this together, I can plot the visualization of snow catalog. And in particular, I want to look at the ratings. So this is the ratings of, of the snow catalogs table. Now, if I change my slider value, meaning that if I modify that, you'll see that all the cells below gets regenerated uh, and this visualization gets updated. And every single time I made a modification, you can see that subsequent cells are re-executed and that actually changes my data distribution. So this is a very simple example of a data app where I have some sort of interaction mechanism in this case, a slider. And then I, do, I perform some operations with my data. And then finally, I plot a visualization. And your data visualization actually changes based on your interaction. One of the things I love about Snowflake notebooks is I can use keyboard shortcuts to navigate across different cells in the notebook, run the different cells uh, using the Shift Enter command. For example, in this case, I can use the shift enter command to run the drop table, which essentially drops my snow catalog table uh, to clean up my tutorial environment. So that's it. In this demo, we took a look at what you can build with Snowflake notebooks and how you can get started with your first project. If you like this video, be sure to click on the playlist below to check out more videos on notebooks in this channel. As always, please like and subscribe. I can't wait to see what you'll build with Snowflake notebooks.